Welcome to Learning Radius Current Affairs 2020-21. In this video, we are starting with environment decology. Environment decology is very crucial and is very decisive as far as UPSC preliminary examination is concerned. In this video, we will be discussing 10 topics and the 10 topics of discussions are Papuan Reserve Forest, State to declare 600 acres of array forest, array as reserve forest, Komodo dragon, environment pollution prevention and control authority, blue flag certification, sloth bear and Nandagannan zoological park, global initiative to reduce land degradation and coral reef program, Kalinga forest, Karai camel and living planet report 2021. The topic of discussions are Living Planet Report 2020, Karai Camel, Kalinga Forest, Global Initiative to Reduce Land Degradation and Coral Reef Program, Sloth Deer, Sloth Deer and Nandagana Zoological Park, Blue Flag Certification, and Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority, Komodo Dragon, State to declare 600 acres of area as reserve forest, Papuan Reserve Forest. Very good morning, dear students. Welcome to Learning Radius. Welcome to Learning Radius Current Affairs 2020-21. In this video, we'll be discussing environment ecology. Environment ecology is very significant and very decisive for UPSC preliminary examination. In this video, we'll be discussing 10 topics from Environment Ecology 2020-21. And the 10 topics are Papuan Reserve Forest, State to declare 600 acres of area as reserve forest, Komodo Dragon, Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority, Blue Flag Certification, Sloth Beer and Nandagannan Zoological Park, Global Initiative to Reduce Land Degradation and Coral Reef Program, Kalinga Forest, Karai Camel, Living Planet Report 2020. So the 10 topics of discussion right from Environment Ecology, Living Planet Report 2020, Karai Camel, Kalinga Frog, Global Initiative to Reduce Land Degradation and Coral Reef Program, Sloth Beer and Nandagana Zoological Park, Blue Flag Certification, Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority, Komodo Dragon, State to Declare 600 Acres of Area as Reserve Forest, and Papuan Reserve Forest. Let's come to the first topic that is Papuan Reserve Forest. Forest cover loss threatens Hornbill in Arunachal Pradesh. Papuan Reserve Forest is an important bird and biodiversity area in Arunachal Pradesh. It is located between two IBS Itanagar Wildlife Sanctuary to the east and Pakeh Wildlife Sanctuary to the west. So that is, it is Papuan Reserve Forest as it is in discussion and the forest cover loss threatened Hornbill in Arunachal Pradesh. So Papuan Reserve Forest is in discussion. At the same time, Hornbills is also in discussion. And Papuan Reserve Forest is an important bird and biodiversity area in Arunachal Pradesh. So this particular fundamentals related to Papuan Reserve Forest and Hornbill should be there in your mind. Now Papuan Reserve Forest form part of Eastern Himalayas endemic bird area. A large part of the site is covered by subtropical dry evergreen and semi evergreen forest while the higher areas are under subtropical broadleaf hill forest cover. So UPSC asked one question related to Eastern Himalayas endemic bird area before. Pepper Reserve Forest is nesting habitat of three species of the large color fruit eating hornbill, great brothered and oriental peat. So that's the discussion about Pepper Reserve Forest. So Pepper Reserve Forest, the discussion as it is forest cover loss threatened Hornbill in Arunachal Pradesh, so that's the discussion. So we have to have a clarity regarding Hornbill. And Papuan Reserve Forest forms part of the Eastern Himalayas endemic bird area. A large part of the site is covered by subtropical 
dry evergreen and semi evergreen forests while the higher areas are under subtropical broadleaf hill forest cover next discussion is related to state to declare 600 acres of array as a reserve forest maharashtra government decided to declare 600 acres of land in array mill colony near the sanjay gandhi national park in mumbai as a reserve forest and conserve it the state use section under the indian forest act 1927 which gives powers to state to notify 600 acres near the sanjay gandhi national park as a reserve forest so array as a reserve forest in discussion sanjay gandhi national park as such is in discussion it's all because the government the maharashtra government decided to declare 600 acres of land in array mill colony near sanjay gandhi national park in mumbai as a reserve forest and conserve it the state use section under the indian forest act 1927 So, Indian Forest Act 1927, which gives power to the state to notify 600 acres near the Sanjay Gandhi National Park as a reserve forest. So, the power of the state in connection with Indian Forest Act 1927 has to be there in your mind. Now, what is a reserve forest? So, reserve forest is a forest that enjoy judicial protection based on the legal system. Reserve forest may also be used for the short and small context across various countries. Reserve forests are the protected forests with a natural habitat that has high degree of protection from any kind of hunting and poaching. So that is related to reserve forest. Reserve forest is the forest that enjoys judicial protection based on the legal system. Reserve forests may also be used for the short and small context across various countries. Reserve forests are the protected forests with a natural habitat that has high degree of protection from any kind of hunting and poaching. next discussion is related to komodo dragon according to the new study conducted by the university of adelaide and deakin university both in australia komodo dragon the world largest lizard would become extinct in the next few decades due to climate change unless measures are taken to change the status quo so you basically can ask a question uh, komodo dragon is in news or is related to or consider the statement related to komodo dragon so according to the new study conducted by university of adelaide and deakin university both in australia komodo dragon the world largest lizard could become extinct in the next few decades due to climate unless measures are taken to change the status quo the study used models to predict that the dragon could become extinct on three of the five island habits where it is currently found according to authors of the study climate change was likely to cause a sharp decline in the availability of habitat for komodo dragons reducing their population so that's the discussion about a species that is a komodo dragon the study was published in the journal ecology and evolution komodo national park unesco world heritage site is situated in the island of komodo that is in eastern indonesia and is a habitat for this lizard species iucn status of the animal is vulnerable next discussion is environment pollution prevention and control authority So under the ordinance released by the Union Ministry of Law and Justice the Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority EPCA has been dissolved and replaced by a commission comprising over 20 members So under the ordinance released by the Union Ministry of Law and Justice the Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority EPCA has been dissolved and replaced by a commission comprising over 20 members the commission for air quality management in national capital region and adjoining areas will have the power to lay down parameters of air quality discharge of environmental pollutants inspect premises violating the law ordering closure of non abiding industries plants among others so the commission for air quality management in national capital region and adjoining areas will have the power to lay down parameters of air quality discharge of environmental pollutants inspect premises violating the law ordering closure of non abiding industries and plants among others so here under the ordinance released by union ministry of law and justice the environment pollution prevention and control authority epca has been dissolved and replaced by a commission comprising over 20 members so that is a discussion about epca should be there in your mind now environment pollution prevention and control authority has been dissolved that is a discussion has been dissolved and replaced by a commission comprising over 20 members citizen can click pictures or make a video of pollution causing activities such as burning of garbage industrial pollution and dust and upload them on the mobile application 
it will identify the location and complaint will be automatically forwarded to the department concerned for time bound redressal epca is a supreme court mandated body taking with task with taking various measures to tackle air pollution in the national capital region it was notified in 1998 by environment ministry under the environment protection act 1986 besides the chairman the epca has 14 members some of whom are the environment secretary of the national capital territory of delhi chairperson of the new delhi municipal council transport commission of nct the commissioners of various municipal corporation of delhi and professors of iit delhi and jawaharlal nehru university so this was the discussion about environment pollution prevention and control authority so the discussion as like mentioned under the ordinance released by the union minister of law and justice the environment pollution prevention and control authority has been dissolved and replaced by a commission comprising over 20 members that's a discussion next topic of discussion is blue flag certification all eight beaches recommended by government gets international blue flag certification so that is the discussion the beaches that have been awarded the blue flag certification are shivrajpur that is in dwaraga gujarat gokhla that is in diu kasargod that is in kerala and uh, padubidri that is in karnataka kappad again in kerala rishikonda is in ap golden is in puri odisha and uh, radhanagar that is in andaman nicobar islands india has also been awarded a third prize by the international jury under the international best practices for pollution control in coastal region so blue flag certification as such as there in the discussion and all eight beaches recommended by government gets international blue flag certification like shivrajpur gokla kasargod padubidri kapad rishikonda golden and radhanagar and india has also been awarded a third prize by the international jury under the international best practices for pollution control in coastal area japan south korea and uae are the only other asian nation who have been conferred with a couple of blue flag beaches india is now in the league of 50 blue flag uh, countries and we take pride in this honor to our nation planning to take this journey forward to 100 such beaches in the country in the next 5 years so complete details related to the fundamentals of blue flag should be there in your mind india began its humble journey in 2018 for development of pilot beaches one each in coastal states or ut and presented the first set of eight beaches for certification for the ensuing tourist season 2020 sikom then uh, ministry of environment forest and climate change in its pursuit of sustainable development of the coastal region of india embarked up a highly acclaimed and flagship program beams beach environment and aesthetic management service under integrated coastal zone management project so there's a term called beams is in discussion b e a m s beams that is beach environment and aesthetic management services so beach environment and aesthetic management services under integrated coastal zone management project this was aimed at striving for the coveted international eco label blue flag accorded by the foundation of environment education fee denmark so again right from uh, upsc point of view what is blue flag certification what is the foundation of environment education that is fee which is based at denmark and integrated coastal zone management the basic fund fundamentals and beach environment and aesthetic management services that is another term right from coastal management right from uh, right from blue flag certification or terms related to blue flag certification that is beam once again it is beach environment and aesthetic management services now the objective of beam program is to abate pollution in coastal waters and beaches promote sustainable development of beach amenities facilities protect and conserve coastal ecosystem and natural resources and encourage local authorities and stakeholders to strive and maintain high standard of cleanliness hygiene safety and security for beach goers in accordance with uh, coastal environment norms and regulation this program promotes beach tourism and recreation in absolute harmony with nature and is unique in that sense so that is about beams beach environment and aesthetic management services Next discussion is on Sloth Bear and Nandaganam Zoological Park. Three bears have died in 17 days in Nandaganam Zoological Park in Bhubaneswar. So because of that, Nandaganam Zoological Park as such was there in discussion. So obviously, what is the basic fundamental related to that particular zoological park should be clear in your mind. 
and why it was there in news is because of three bears have died in 17 days in Nandaganan Zoological Park in Gubaneshwar. The sloth bear conservation status is currently listed as listed as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Now, what is Nandaganan Zoological Park? It is located in Bhubaneswar, Odisha, adjacent to Chandaka Dambara Wildlife Sanctuary. This is the only zoo in India with credit of having Patas monkey, Eastern Rosella, and Open Bill stock. So, Nandaganan Zoological Park. It is located in Bhubaneswar. Odisha adjacent to Chandaka Dampara Wildlife Sanctuary. This is the only zoo in India with the credit of having Patas monkey, Eastern Rosella, and Open Bill stock. So all species which comes in news related to a zoological park or related to current affair, there should be clarity because UPSC asks direct question from species or indirect question related to species. So Nandaganna Zoological Park is the only zoo in India with the credit of having Patras Mangi, Eastern Rosella and Open Bill Stock. It has the glory among two zoos in India having Orangutan, others is others in Kanpur Zoological Park, Uttar Pradesh, Indian Pangolin, others in uh, Jagram Zoo, West Bengal, Spotted Munia, others in uh, Sayanjibong Zoo, Gujarat and Burmese Python, others in Calcutta Snake Park, West Bengal. It is among the three zoo of India having Gee, Winged, macaws and uh, sunaras vulture. So here some species as it is in discussion. The first one is Orangutan. Second one is Indian Pangolin. Then uh, Spotted Munia. Burmese Python. These are the significant species in discussion. At the same time, green winged uh, macaws and sunaras vulture. So this particular species as it is in news related to Nandagana Zoological Park. The first one is Lock Beer. Three bears have died in 17 days in Nandaganam Zoological Park and the sloth bear conservation status is currently listed as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. And uh, it is located in Gubaneshwar. It is the only zoo in India with the credit of having Patas, Mangi, Eastern Rosella and Open Bill stock. And at the same time, uh, Orangutan, Indian Pangolin, Spotted Munia, Burmese Python and Green Wing Macaws and Sinaras Vulture as such is in discussion related to the same or related to the same topic. Next topic of discussion is a global initiative to reduce land degradation and coral reef program. The environment ministerial meeting of the G20 countries took place through video conferencing at the, under the presidency of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, representing India Union, Environment, Climate Change and Forest Minister Sri Prakash Javedkar. <coughs> India has taken significant step to protect environment and forest and wildlife as, a, as well as combating pollution and climate change. So coral reef is in discussion. What is the basic science behind coral reef at the same time? How coral gets bleached and how corals get affected and what are the causes for coral bleaching and what is zoos and the LA and how it detaches from coral reefs and coral bleaching happens when coral reefs as such gets Sorry, uh, when zoos and the LA gets detached from um, corals. So we know that uh, there is an algae that is zoos and the LA. And this algae is having a very good symbiotic relationship with corals. And this symbiotic relationship results in the growth of corals. And if the symbiotic relationship is affected, the zoos and the LA get detached. When this algae get detached from the corals, the corals start dying. And... Uh, Death as such completes means it starts uh, bleaching out. So when the zoos and the LA detach from the corals, the corals gets bleached and that is what called coral bleaching. So here global initiative to reduce land degradation and coral reefs program. And India has taken significant step to protect environment and forest and wildlife as well as combating pollution and climate change. India is committed to work with G20 nations for a better world. The global initiative on reducing land degradation aims to strengthen the implementation of existing framework to prevent, halt and reverse land degradation within G20 member states and globally taking into account possible implication on the achievement of other SDGs and adhering to the principle of doing no harm. The global coral reef R&D accelerator platform is an innovative action oriented innovative sorry innovative action oriented initiative aimed at creating a global research and development program to advance research innovation and capacity building 
in all phases of coral reefs conservation restoration and adaptation and strengthening ongoing efforts and commitment made to enhance coral reefs conservation and their further degradation so coral reef conservation and their further degradation is very very crucial because that support the ocean ecology coral reefs support the ocean ecology and it is considered as as equivalent to the tropical evergreen forest so coral reefs are as like the tropical evergreen forest of the ocean and this particular tropical evergreen forest as a support high biodiversity in the land as like that coral reefs as a support high biodiversity in the ocean so the ocean biodiversity is completely supported by coral reefs so the conservation and uh, protection of coral reefs are very very crucial as far as ocean ecology is concerned next is uh, kalinga forest sorry kalinga frog indian scientists have reported a first of its kind discovery of morphological phenotypic plasticity mpp in the kalinga cricket frog mpp is the ability of an organism to show drastic morphological variation in response to natural environment variation or stimuli so what is mpp that is morphological physical feature so that should be there in your mind so indian scientists have reported a first of its kind discovery of morphological phenotypic plasticity in the kalinga cricket frog mpp is the ability of an organism to show drastic morphological physical features variation in response to natural environmental variation or stimuli the discovery is made by researchers amit hadji and girish kadaveru from the breeding behavior and biocaustic lab department of zoology karnataka university darwad and kp dinesh of zoological survey of india pune the finding were published recently in the journal zoo taxa the frog species was identified not long ago its documentation was done in 2018 and reported from the eastern ghat in the eastern ghat the species is found on the higher elevation hill ranges of odisha and andhra pradesh so here indian scientists have reported a first of its kind discovery of morphological phenotypic plasticity so what is morphological phenotypic plasticity that is the most important thing and morphological phenotypic plasticity is the ability of an organism to show drastic morphological variation in response to natural environmental variation or stimuli so that is mpp is about so once again morphological phenotypic plasticity is the ability of an organism to show drastic morphological variation in response to natural environmental variation or stimuli that's a discussion next topic of discussion is karai camel Karai camel is found in coastal part of Kutch region of Gujarat. These camels are well adapted to both dry land as well as coastal ecosystem. They have excellent swimming capacity in sea water and graze mainly on mangrove and other saline species. Karai camel can thrive on high saline water and tolerate high TDS. Since 2015, karai camels are getting protection similar to endangered species. so there's a discussion of karai camel karai camel is found in coastal part of kutch region of gujarat these camels are well adapted to both dry land as well as coastal ecosystem they have excellent uh, swimming capacity in sea water and graze mainly on mangroves and other saline species karai camel can thrive on high saline water and tolerate high tds since 2015 karai camels are getting protection similar to endangered species so this karai camels is found in coastal part of kutch region of gujarat that was the discussion about why they are threatened there has been heavy industrialization salt and cement factories along the coastal line of the areas inhabited by them which has restricted the access of karai camels to their mangroves on which they are dependent for their food so that's why they are threatened this karai camel have been heavy the, the karai camel there has been heavy industrialization salt and cement factories along the coastal lines of the areas inhabited by them which has restricted the access of karai camels to their mangroves on which they are dependent for their food last topic of discussion is related to living planet report 2020 the living planet report is published every 2 years by the world wide fund for nature it is based on the living planet index and ecological footprint calculations the living planet report is a world leading science based analysis on the health of our planet and impact of human activity so living planet report 2020 as it is in news the living planet report is published every 2 year by the world wide fund for nature 
It is based on the Living Planet Index and Ecological Footprint Calculation. Living Planet Report is a world leading science based analysis on the health of our planet and the impact of human activity. So Living Planet Report is very crucial. We have to follow just to understand what is the capacity of our planet and what is the impact of human activity. So that is why I told Living Planet Report is a world leading science based analysis on the health of our planet and the impact of human activity. Now the key finding our planet's wildlife population have now plumped by 68 percentage since 1970 and there are no signs that this downward trend is slowing. 84 percentage decline in population of freshwater species including, first, including fish birds, amphibians and mammals. The starkest average population declined in any biome since 1970. One third freshwater or riverine species threatened with extinction. So this is a key finding in connection with Living Planet Report. At the same time, 85 percentage area under wetland that have already been lost worldwide. 75 percent of Earth's ice free land surface has already been significantly altered. Most of the oceans are polluted. The largest wildlife pollution loss, according to a Living Planet Index, has been in Latin America at an alarming 94 percent. Almost 90 percent of global wetland have been lost since, nine, since 1700. The report finds that India has lost nearly one third of its natural wetland to urbanization, agricultural expansion and pollution over the last four decades. 14 out of 20 river basin in India are already water stressed and will be moving to extreme water scarcity by 2050. So that's all about the discussions of Living Planet Report and Living Planet Report the significant finding should be there in your mind as like I mentioned 90% uh, of Global wetlands have been lost since uh, 1700. The largest wildlife population loss according to Living Planet Index has been in Latin America at an alarming 94%. The report find that India has lost nearly one third of its natural wetland to urbanization, agriculture expansion and pollution over the last four decades. 14 out of 20 river basin in India are already water stressed and will be moving to extreme water scarcity by 2050. So that's all from environment ecology is starting 10 topics and as like I mentioned you have to watch the analysis video and understanding video when you listen to an environment ecology discussion you should have the capacity to relate how UPSC frame a question from this particular topic as like UPSC asked in 2018 2017 and 19 and 20 very specifically so watch the 2020 environment ecology analysis video Try to understand how UPSC framed questions from environment ecology at the same time the understanding videos also. So basic difference between analysis and understanding video in analysis I point that how UPSC framed the question and from which topic in right from which newspaper that relationship you can see. In understanding video to give a clarity related to the earlier questions I'm reading the question at the same time I'm giving the exact answer of each and every question. So watch the analysis and understanding of um, environment ecology video or the, watch the videos related to uh, environment ecology, the previous questions. Have a clarity, then watch the video, then you will be able to think how all UPSC can frame questions from environment ecology. In the next video, I'll be discussing the next 10 topics related to environment ecology 2020-21 current affairs. Have a great time. Meet you in the next video. Thank you.